Hello guys, this is May Park. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a winter holiday card with a stamped background and pop-up inlay technique. I'm also going to show you the entire release from all to new and I'll be using their new products in today's video. As usual, I'm going to show you my messy desk at the end of this video after my project is done. So make sure to watch the video to the end. If you haven't done it yet, Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any new videos from me. I'm going to make this Christmas card with a hidden letter on a stamped background using the Bountiful French stamp set and Mega Alphabet die from All to New. It might look difficult to make, but I promise this is very easy to make, and I'll share a few tips and tricks on how to create your custom background with a perfect balance between each image. Before I start, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Alternate September 2018 release products. If you don't want to watch, feel free to skip this part to jump on the card making process. Now I'm going to turn on some music and I'll be back soon. When it comes to finding inspiration, I love getting design ideas from my old cards. These are some of the cards that I made using alternate products. I can't stop making a card using a mega alphabet die cut as a focal point of my card. I think using an initial letter of a recipient's name is a great way to personalize the card while a big bold letter die cut can bring attention to your card front. Alternate mega alphabet dies are very versatile. You can create custom banners and signs or use the letter individually as a focal point for any project. I pulled out two stamp sets, but I ended up using only one stamp set, which is Bountiful Branch. You can definitely mix and match a few different stamp sets, which include similar designs. If you are a beginner, I recommend you use one stamp set, so you don't need to choose the images that go together. Since this stamp set is brand new, I'm going to season my stamps by rubbing my stamps with an eraser. I'll be also stamping the images with some colored inks on a piece of scrap paper. That way, I can get better impression when I stamp the images on my actual card panel. At this step, you can also test out the placement of your images or ink colors for stamping. Then I'm going to choose the ink colors for my images. If you are not sure which colors work together, you can refer to the Trifold insert card as it shows four card designs with color recommendations. When it comes to choosing the colors for my projects, I usually find the color inspiration by searching the illustration images on Google. This time, I found my color inspiration from the cover of my new planner. I really love the retro feeling of this floral illustration and I decide to choose my ink colors based on this beautiful illustration. I will include a list of alternate ink colors on the description box below and on my blog post in case you are interested in the colors I used on my card. Here I'm testing out the colors and practicing the stamp layering at the same time. I'm keeping the trifold insert card next to me so I can refer to the layering guide while stamping. However, the stamps from this bountiful French stamp set are very easy to line up, so you don't need the layering guide that often. I'm going to stamp my berries using Sunkist, Orange Cream, and Autumn Blaze. For my leaves, I'll be using Volcano Lake, Lagoon, and Emerald. You can use the traditional holiday color combination, which is red and green. However, if you want to step up your card design to the next level, I highly recommend you give non-traditional colors a try. 
I have my white panel ready and I place the panel inside the original misted stamping tool. I cut the panel slightly larger than A2 card size out of Nina Solo White 110 pound cardstock and I'll explain later why I'm stamping on the large size panel. I want my images to overlap partially with each corner of my alphabet die. So I'm going to use my alphabet die to help me find a placement of my first branch image. I'm stamping the bottom layer image with a volcano lake. To get a nice and intense impression, I'll be stamping the same image one more time with the same ink. I'm going to dry my paper with my heat tool. Alternate ink is dye based, so it dries fast. So you can totally skip this drying process if you want. However, since I will double stamping some of the images, I just wanted to make sure the previous layer is completely dry before I move on to the next layer. That way, I'll be able to get a clean and vibrant stamping impression. I'm going to keep adding layers and drying my paper between each layer. Once my first image is done, I'm using my Mega Alphabet die again to find a placement for my second branch image. Make sure not to stamp the bottom side of your branch near the top of the alphabet die. It will help please people's eye when they first see the card. And try to place each image to face toward a different direction with a similar distance. They're gonna help you create some fun organic movement on the background even though you are using only one branch image. My custom background is now finished and I'll be trimming off the excess of my panel using Timor's tonic paper trimmer. At this point, you can decide which part of your stamped background you will keep or not. I made some stamping mistake on the right side of my panel, so I'm definitely trimming out that side. This is the reason I start out with my panel, which is a bit larger than regular A2 size. You can have more chance to control your background design when you use a large panel for your stamping. Inspired by the cover of my planner, I was going to color the white space with a black marker on the background. On second thought, I'm going to add tiny dots between each image using a fine tip of alternate artist markers, moon rock, and evening gray instead. Adding dots help bring my images together and highlight my colorful branches. Of course, you can leave your background clean and white without dust if you want. When you choose the marker color for the dark technique, make sure to choose from the colors you used for the stamped image. That way, you can add interest to your background while keeping your eyes not distracting from the focal images. Once my background is done, I'm going to die cut the alphabet letter using the Mega Alphabet R die out of my stamped panel. I'm using my TSQ ruler to place my alphabet die in straight and secure the die on my panel using washi tape so that it doesn't move while die cutting. I'm going to place my mega alphabet die and my panel between cutting plates. I'm also placing a piece of print paper over my panel to prevent from picking up any dirt on my cutting plate. Then I'll be running them through my Spellbinders Platinum Dike machine. Then I'm going to die cut additional alphabet out of white foam foam. If you don't have this foam seed, you can die cut several alphabets out of white cardstock and stack them together to make your alphabet thick. I'll be coloring the side of my foam foam letter die cut using a brush tip of Alternate Artist Marker Moonlock to match the color with my stamped panel. Now it's time to assemble my card. I'm going to mount the negative part of my stamped panel on the A2 size top folding white card base using alternate glue tape. Then I'll be attaching my die cut alphabets together 
and inlay my alphabet die cut on the opening of my panel using tonic nouveau crystal glaze. I realized that I missed coloring on some part of my letter, so I'm carefully removing the die cut from the panel and coloring the missing area. Then I'm going to attach my die cut letter on my panel. I don't know why I keep making a mistake today. I also found that I mounted my stamped panel upside down. I hope I'm not the only one who makes this kind of silly mistake. Now I'm going to open my sentiment. I'm pulling out some of the sentiment banners from the container which is full of leftovers from my previous projects. Then I'll place each of them temporarily over my card front to decide types of font, size and color of my sentiment. I think I like the white hidden most sentiment with a simple font on black cardstock. I'm going to pull out the sentiment stamps from a few different stamp sets. I'm prepping a piece of black cardstock with an anti-static powder bag to remove any moisture, static and oils. This step helps prevent any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas. Then I ink up the stamps with alternate embossing ink and stamp the sentiments on the paper. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some alternate pure white embossing powder off the sentiments and tap the excess powder off my paper. If you have any stray powder left on your paper, you can use a dry paintbrush and piercing tool to fill it away. Then I'll heat set my sentiments with heat tool until the embossing powder is completely melted. I'm making sure not to heat over the same area for a long time so I can get a clean embossing line. Please be careful not to touch the embossed sentiments until they are cool. Otherwise, you will smudge your embossed areas. I trimmed my sentiment into thin banner using a craft knife and ruler. I'll be mounting the sentiment banner on the right side of my alphabet letter using thin foam tape and black foam square to give dimension. I'm using my TSQ ruler to place my sentiment banner in straight. I ended up using the sentiment from the starting nice stamp set. I'm going to store the sentiment leftovers in the container so I can use them for my future projects. To finish off my card, I'm stamping the sentiment inside my card using alternate blessings stamp set and another sentiment on the back of my card using alternate crafty brand stamp set. This is it for today. This video is part of Altenew September 2018 Stamp and Die release blog hub. Be sure to check out my blog for more details and leave a comment on my blog hub post for a chance to win a $30 gift certificate to the Altenew online store. If you have any questions, please leave comments below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. I hope these video tutorials inspire you to create a card using a stamped background and die cut inlay technique. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any new videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye!